Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Fellowship Friday for the Church of the Eternally Secure. I'm very happy and excited to be back with everybody again tonight. Uh, uh, maybe you realize I wasn't here last Friday. Some of you, you probably didn't even miss me at all, but I'm thankful that Brother Cripps was available and willing to fill in and, and uh, host the program. I did watch the program uh, after it got uploaded and I liked it very much. Uh, I, I thought that the uh, uh, Brother Cripps so, uh, accomplished exactly what I asked him to do, and, and that is to make sure that the panel and the uh, chat room were really um, uh, working together that there was to try to tear down this separation and make it make us all one. So that's what we're going to try to continue to do is make sure that we're involved with the chat room as much as possible. I thought the the chemistry uh, with um, uh, Lisa and Paula and uh, Dave and uh, Cripps was 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 wonderful. Uh, and I really can't, everything about that last Friday program was, was great. So welcome back everybody on the, on the panel and everybody in the chat room, welcome back to you. Um, as you know, the Fellowship Friday program, there is no uh, like agenda or uh, uh, scheduled subject. We're gonna kind of fly by the seat of our pants tonight. Um, but the most important thing we wanna do is find out what's going on in each and every one of your lives, if there's, any needs you have, any uh, praise reports, uh, any questions. If you do have a question for the panel uh, or, uh, or a, you want to make a statement that you want the panel to respond to, then uh, uh, just put it all in all caps for us, okay? Uh, all right, well, let's, uh, let's have the, some introductions here first. As I see you from left to right, I see uh, Brother Dave, uh, or Brother Dave, that's, that's, you are Dave, and that's the name of your channel. So uh, say hi to everybody. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hope you guys had a great week. Hope you guys are looking forward to a good weekend. Hope you guys are still standing strong and that you guys are still pressing into the Lord each and every day, getting into his word, and I hope you guys are uh, doing okay. All right. Thank you, Brother Dave. I'm happy you could be back with us again. Uh, and next we have Sister Elisa. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless everyone, everyone out there in the chat. Thank you again for having me, Brother Luke. Yes, all right. Thank you, Sister. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, Sister Paula. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. I'm looking forward to some interesting conversation. Yeah. I'm sure it will be very interesting. And uh, I'm happy tonight. It was actually a surprise. Uh, but we have uh, not only Brother Dave, but Brother David. Uh, I think it's, uh, well, I don't want to say your last name unless you may not want it public. But uh, Brother David, uh, he does the um, Fundamental Friday program on Talk and Doctrine. Brother David, glad you could be with us on the Fellowship Friday program. I want to say hi to everybody. Yeah. Hey, how you doing, guys? It's my first time here, so... I'll have to see how this goes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll put us on probation. And if you like us, maybe you'll come back again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my attempt at humor, David. In case you, you most people don't feel bad, though. Uh, hardly anybody ever understands when I'm trying to be funny. I, I, I tend to only amuse myself. <laughs> I'll catch on. Uh, <laughs> okay. So let's go through the chat room first here and just say hey, everybody, John, J-O-N. Uh, by the way, um, to the um, moderators in the chat room, uh, if you recognize that somebody is uh, here for the first time, please go out of your way to welcome them. The moderators are uh, what we would call the, uh, the greeters in the, uh, in the local churches. So greet the new people. And uh, uh, John, J-O-N, if you're new, welcome. Uh, if you're not new, I apologize for not noticing you before. Uh, and we got Yvonne Vlogs. Not, don't confuse him with Ivan. This is Yvonne. And uh, of course, Maureen Believes. Welcome, everybody. Celine is here with us. And Richard Arena. Okay. And uh, all right. I'm sure more people are joining us. Gary. Now, Gary, I don't know who Gary is. But uh, if you're new here, welcome, Gary. And... Okay, I think we got, and Caleb Calloway, hi. Joyce Humick, 
some of these names I recognize, but you know, some of you might um, be aware of this. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I made a video saying that I, um, uh, I was not going to um, uh, participate in chat rooms and I was not going to comment on videos any longer. Uh, and I think the title was, uh, the video was uh, um, too much drama for me. I, I, it was just stressing me out too much uh, trying, to, trying to do it. Uh, the exception, of course, this Fellowship Friday program, that's the whole point of it, to interact with you. So I'm certainly happy to, t to do that. But so some of you, I'm, I'm just saying that um, it might be my first time. You may have been here before, but I didn't notice before, so I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, is there a, I said, let's get high on the most high. Uh, Sister uh, Lisa, what do you think of that? Do you want to get high on the most high? Uh, well, that's an interesting question. <laughs> uh, somebody might record me saying, yes, I want to get high, and then I'm going to be in a world of hurt trying to explain what that really meant. <laughs> but uh, always, Brother Luke, I mean, just... Praising the Lord Jesus always helps to uplift my spirit and fellowshipping with other believers is always a wonderful thing. It always gets me excited when we put our focus where it's supposed to be in lifting Jesus up and exalting his glorious name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Uh, you're, uh, I always associate you, Lisa, you and Dave, Brother Dave, uh, because I think you're, uh, the way you communicate is so, so very much alike. There's a lot of passion uh, in, your, in the way you communicate, and uh, it's very, very powerful. And there's, there's a need for that, uh, and rather than some of us like me and others that tend to be maybe a monotone and not, not as uh, dramatic. So I'm glad uh, brother, uh, brother Cripps is here with us uh, too. Thanks for coming, brother Cripps. Want to say hi to everybody? Yes, sir. Thank you. What a warm welcome. Hello to everybody in the chat. And I'm happy to be back with you guys for another fellowship Friday. And I appreciate all the kind words at the beginning. I do agree. There was uh, chemistry, uh, but between us and on the panel, and that was uh, very enjoyable and very edifying to me. And uh, the chat was on fire. And uh, yeah, it was a great broadcast. So I'm, I'm excited about tonight. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I I, um, I I hope that maybe we can come up with a nickname for Brother Cripps. Um, but it would, I'm, I'm talking about a complimentary, uh, flattering type of nickname. And I'd like the nickname to have to do with the, his the uh, the the velvet voice, the <laughs> velvet voice that he has. Uh, I I will admit it. I, maybe others feel the same way, but I do envy his speaking voice. Um, it's just uh, silky smooth. Mm, praise God. Uh, yeah, they. I've been told that I have the perfect face for radio. Mm. <laughs> so I I don't know what people think of my voice, but um, I, I know that my face is not very appealing. All right, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, there's. When I say let's get high in the most high, by the way, I, uh, you know that I'm a former Ruckmanite. Uh, I don't know if everybody here even knows who Ruckman is. Dr. Peter Ruckman, the late, great uh, Peter Ruckman, Ruckman uh, at uh, Pensacola Bible School, I think. And uh, uh, he, he went to be with the Lord just this last year, I think, uh, at probably close to 90 years old. And... Uh, uh, he's written over a hundred books. I, I read over forty of his books, and uh, um, I learned a lot from him. But then I finally reached a point where I, um, I, some of the positions that he took that I embraced and repeated, uh, uh, people would say, "Well, you're wrong about that, Brother Luke." And after talking to them, they they uh, won me over to their side, and I changed my position. So. As much as I love Dr. Peter Ruckman, um, you know, I, I don't think that he's infallible as I did for many years. Uh, but uh, the only reason I'm bringing you up now is I want to give him credit for this statement I made here at the beginning. Let's get high on the most high. Uh, in my life, I spent the first half of my life wanting to get high. Uh, and I, I did all the things that were done in my generation, many others many people today are still doing all these things to try to alter their reality and uh 
but uh, I don't get high like that anymore. But it really, I get high from Jesus, from from the, the Bible, from the fellowship. So uh, does let me ask anybody who feels like talking about it. Do you, um, I know that you're all here because you want to. Nobody's here because they feel like they're obligated. It's uh, you know, or there are some legalistic reason where you're trying to work. Uh, to earn your salvation. We're here because it's a labor of love. We love to be with the brethren and the sistren, and we love to be uh, uh, talk about Jesus in the Bible. Uh, so that's the motivation here. But do you get high on it? Does it give you a high to be with be with uh, the saints and, and uh, share this common faith? I, I hope I'm not the only one that gets excited. And, and sometimes I turn off the camera while we're all talking, and I get up and start dancing. Um, I don't want anybody to think I'm a Pentecostal, but, uh, you know, you have caught me a few times see, doing my happy dance, but that's how I feel. I just feel full, so full of joy um, b b because of this uh, salvation and this great Savior God, Jesus. Amen. I'd, li I'd love to weigh in on that, brother. Yeah, go, go ahead, brother. You know, have you heard the term natural high? Yeah. Anybody heard that term? Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is the way God made our bodies. He made our bodies to react in a certain way to certain uh, stimuli. Um, so for us, when we uh, fellowship and we celebrate the fact that, uh, that Jesus saved us and that we're reconciled to God through faith uh, in him, and um, we, we have the joy that Jesus gives us through his Holy Spirit, and it's natural. It's not based on any other substance. It's not based on smoking something or drinking something or anything like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. So when you say be high on the most high, um, I, I'm delighted to say that I'm high on the most high. Um, I understand uh, why Sister Lisa would be concerned about that because as she said, people take one part of something and then you have to go back. You feel like you have to explain it because, uh, uh, you know, we, we all very well know that there are people out there that are attacking that just take little snippets of things and they don't do it in context, of course. So um, you have to be careful what you say. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be careful of saying, I want to be high on the most high. You're muted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You, you said just enough, Brother Cripps, for me to recognize that I was muted again. There you go. <laughs> You're my my muting uh, war warning going off. I'm happy to do that as long <laughs> as you don't get irritated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that that leads us to some points in the in the um, uh, chat room that we should talk about. But first, before we go into that, uh, I'd like to get everybody else's thoughts. Uh, um, I, I it is true that. Um, we do have um, uh, enemies, uh, not only uh, the spiritual enemies, but but professing believers. Mm -hmm. I say professing because I I can't say yes or no if someone's saved or not. But right. but uh, some of the behavior that I see uh, and, uh, it is shocking to me if, if coming from a believer. Yeah. But there are people that will uh, they they listen to every word that we say. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, they're the most the devoted listeners to our videos. Mm -hmm. But what they're, they're not listening to try to be edified. They're listening to, to try to find a word or a phrase, or even a half of a sentence that they can pull out and twist and try to expose the other person. So it is a, it is a real uh, re reality. But uh, personally, I, I'm not going to restrain myself or wor worry about it. Uh, anybody else getting high on the most high here? Anybody here? Brother Luke, if I could elaborate real quick. Yeah. I was actually making a joke. It was like yeah. a shot across yeah. the bow. I have no problem yeah. saying I get high on Jesus. Yeah. But it, it is a concern because just recently I've had someone come at me trying to get me involved in some online back and forth about a particular believer. Mm -hmm. And I just, I refuse. I won't participate in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, I'm glad you explained that you were uh, joking uh, because you know Brother Cripps does not have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Just also like like Brother Brother David, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
of course, we got David and Dave. So that's how I'm making the distinction between you two brothers tonight. But Brother David, apparently he doesn't have a sense of humor either. I had to explain to him my joke earlier. Mm -hmm. So, but um, uh, Brother David, David. Brother let, me David. Ask, let me ask David, let's get him involved here. Brother David, uh, when I say let's get high on the most high, I mean, you're a very serious person. When I watch your programs, I mean, you're dead serious all the He's time. Serious. Yeah. I've never, I've never really seen you lighten up a bit, yeah. but, and that's fine. I'm not. It's not a criticism. Maybe that's just your personality. But do you get high on the most high in any way? Could we? Would that be fair to say, or is that not not true with you? Well, I don't, I don't know about the terminology, but I, <laughs> I, I am happy every day that God's got my back. Yeah. And so whatever I deal with in my life, it's it's small because I know the the maker of this place owns me. Mm -hmm. And so and that that uplifts my spirit a lot. And I do joke around, but I, it's just not very often. It seems like the past few years, I don't know if it's just because I'm getting old or what it a joke has to be really funny. And if I'm laughing I'm seriously laughing. I'm not just laughing to make you feel good or something. It's actually funny. So that that might be the problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you, uh, uh, do you know what kind of ring the rabbit uh, gave his fiance? Oh, no. I, I have no idea. 24 carats. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dad joke. All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, so let's go. Let's look at the, the chat room here and, and, and see what's going on. Uh, Celine says, Paula, the difference between salvation and discipleship. And of course, that's related to what Hendrix is, is saying here, also, I guess. Hendrix is, uh, says, Do you think we could talk how we should act towards unbelievers, particularly to more belligerent folks, finding some saints are rolling in the mud with them? and acting uncouth. Mm, good, good question. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, I think that uh, Brother Dave was talking about that before we went live a little bit. Now, Brother Dave, one of the things that we're trying to do, I, I think uh, Matthias and uh, Rene, uh, uh, Brother Daniel, and uh, all of us, um, we, we've all adopted the same um, kind of uh, protocol or rule that we try to follow, and that is that uh, we think we need to, to speak out against bad behavior and uh, and and also um, false doctrine. False doctrine when it comes to the core doctrines, because on on minor doctrines, uh, who's to say? Uh, it, uh, maybe maybe they're right and I'm wrong. Uh, it, it, if it's a minor doctrine, uh, apart from the deity of Christ, faith alone in Christ alone for salvation and eternal security, apart from those things, uh, we could we could make a list if we put our heads together. I bet we could mm -hmm. come up with at least twenty, maybe even a hundred different theological questions or subjects, and ask everybody's opinion. And you're going to find that uh, on almost all of them, there's disagreement. But we we've adopted the um, uh, approach that we we want to have liberty on all the non-essentials. So when we disagree on those things, um, uh, it, we don't need to speak out against it. We just say, well, that's one, that's an interesting point of view. I see it differently. Uh, you heard me say that with Renee and, and Cripps on uh, Wednesday night. We were talking about, uh, the uh, was uh, Matthias, uh, the, uh, the apostle that was chosen by Lot to replace um, Judas. Well, uh, I, I put forth the idea that I, I, I thought that the, the apostles were out of line doing that. I don't, I don't think that they were, um, um, there's no indication to me that God instructed them to do it. Um, I, I think that the replacement for uh, Judas, uh, God uh, had someone in mind already and, and he, God personally chose Paul. Um, so we disagreed on that, but when I when I said I, Renee, I understand that most people see it that way. This is how I see it. So we we when we disagree, we we try to do it at least as as courteously as we can. Uh, so when I'm talking about speaking out against the false teachers, or, or speaking out against the bad behavior, um, yeah, we we do that. We should be doing that. However, where we draw the line is we we're not talking about the people. We're talking about the practices. 
So we, we never mention names. Just, if, just in case somebody here on the panel now is unfamiliar with that, I'm gonna ask you to refrain from mentioning anybody's names. But if, if, if we want, you wanna talk about bad behavior from either believers or non-believers uh, against us, uh, we, yeah, we should, we should identify it and talk about it. And also uh, the, if someone's teaching a, a false gospel or a false Jesus. Um, so let me ask um, Brother Dave uh, to, to respond to that first. Yeah, no problem, Luke. I mean, I, I see it all the time. And, you know, as uh, Sister Lisa was saying earlier, um, you know, people try to get you to engage or they try to get you to, you know, like join a side or things of that nature that just really are, are a waste of time. And, you know, well, you, you, you state your case towards them that you're not really looking for drama. You're just trying to point people to Jesus and, you know, you've, you're at peace with your brothers and sisters, even if you disagree on certain matters. Well, the problem that they, the problem that happens is they maliciously um, use things that have been said out of their context. They piece things together in video clips, or they'll, they'll get a, a group of people to just gather around and go all attack at once or to, you know, spread the 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 slander to others to try to influence people it's just you know it's really really um it's just a bunch of nonsense and so basically you know you state your case you stand up for yourself you tell them you don't want to get involved in that you really just want to point people to jesus and you know i have no issue whatsoever with agreeing to disagree on secondary issues we we all we all have our own interpretation we're all in different um you know stages of growth on those secondary issues not, we're not all going to see eye to eye on those issues because those issues require study and different understanding and and you know eventually i believe god will get us all you know into the same uh a unity on the core essentials like you said brother luke and so if no, if somebody's not going against the deity of christ salvation by faith alone uh you know his virgin birth and the resurrection I don't see why there should be all this ruckus, but according to some groups of people, uh, you know, the slightest little disagreement on a secondary issue is all of a sudden it's it's a heretical thing, and these people need to be, you know, burned at the stake, you know, and if you associate with them, then you're just as guilty as them. It, it, it's just really not of the spirit of God what goes on a lot, and it's, you know, it's it's just a, it's a, a hindrance, and we ought to just focus on you know trying to edify encourage exhort and uplift those who are truly seeking christ mm. Mm. yes uh yes thank you brother uh i'm interested in sister paula's thoughts on this uh, for a couple of reasons paula of course one reason is I, I value your opinion but the other is uh you you've been i'm sure working real hard behind the scenes for a long time uh but only recently are, are you here uh, making your, your public uh, opinions known? Uh, and uh, of course, I, you're probably aware that whenever you say publicly a position on anything, you're going to find that almost every subject has more than one possible answer. So when you take a position, you're gonna find that uh, people on the other side some people do not take too kindly to your your opinion, and you you they uh, they're not very nice about how they're uh, uh, they deal with you. Uh, I hope you haven't had to deal with that yet, but I don't think it can be avoided as long as you dare to say publicly your thoughts on scriptures, Sister mm -hmm. Paul. Well, no, I I've already been initiated yeah. into that club. So. <laughs> yes, yes, she has. <laughs> yes, she has. I feel like I'm special now. <laughs> yeah, you are. Special. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I do notice a lot of that, and I heard when you and Brother Dave were talking uh, before we started, you mentioned that verse about um, mark and avoid, and that is uh, the what we're told to do in scripture when we run across someone we feel is heretical or they're teaching bad doctrine or they're causing discord or whatever we're told to mark them and avoid them and i i suppose you could put uh a expose video under the category of marking them and that's fine but it's almost like they forget the second part of that right because they there's no like where's the avoiding <laughs> you know? i mean if you want to be biblical 
let's do what the Bible says. And it's fine to mark someone if you feel that they're, you know, dangerous, if they're teaching bad doctrine and you feel strongly about it, then by all means, it's a free country. Definitely um, give your opinion. But I noticed that some people, um, it's almost like a, a, an unhealthy obsession. Yep. And um, it's, it's, um, it's bothersome to me for them mm -hmm. uh, because you kind of expect this. I mean, when we're dealing with spiritual things, there is a battle that's going on. And uh, we're, we're all sort of caught up in it. And, um, you know, I just think it's the, the ones that kind of don't let it go. Um, that's, that's unhealthy for them. And it's unhealthy to be obsessed with anything other than pr the preaching of the gospel. In fact, I think there's a, the only time the word addicted is used in the Bible, it's talking about addicted to uh, ministering to the saints. Um, and that's good, but I think a lot of what happens on YouTube is a little unhealthy. And I think that if those people really, you know, do want to do glory for God, it does more glory preaching the gospel. It really does. And, um, but you know, I, and it's funny cause, uh, there's a lot of hate, a lot of hate. Whenever I think of hate, someone told me once something very wise. They said, you know, Paula, we only hate what we can't control. Mm. And every time I hate something or someone, I stop and I remember that and I say, okay, stop trying to control them. Yeah. And it just goes away. The hate goes away. Because when you identify what the problem is, and then you say, you know what, I, I don't have to control this situation, and I don't have to control this person. They're free to do what they want to do. And then it's almost like there's a detachment, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. from, uh, from that person or that situation. We don't have these strong negative feelings come up. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, sorry, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of going in a different direction. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I, I do want to get everybody's, uh, not only uh, thoughts on their experiences with these attacks against them personally, but, but also uh, your idea of uh, how we're supposed to respond to it, if at all. But first, I want to ask uh, Brother David, um, you know, you, you've only been uh, on your program now for, what has it been, maybe six months? Uh, and... Uh, have you experienced it? Uh, I, I know that you're you're you have do have a regular uh, back and forth conversation with, with with someone that is there to you know and try to prove you wrong uh, uh, every time he's there. Uh, but it's, I see that the conversation is very cordial. But are, do, have you had to deal with anybody um, making just really hateful attacks against you? I mean, it's it's one thing to say, David, I disagree with you on this, and this is why, and and, and respectfully discuss the issue. Uh, but but when they when they uh, it degrades into just uh, anger and and uh, it, sometimes even uh, you know profanity and and uh, name calling, brother David, have you had any experience with it? I, I hope you haven't, but it, it is to come if you haven't had it yet. Yeah, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't experienced it yet, unless the moderators got it out of there before I seen it. I, I haven't had none of that. Just some people disagree, which is normal. So with the way I teach and preach and what I preach, so that that's totally normal. But as I said tonight on my show, I do it for the the one that will get it. And so God goes after the one. And so if there's one person that gets it out of my broadcast, that's what it's for. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. I, I, I'd like to give you a commendation here while we're while I'm talking to you tonight. I, I don't get to talk to you that often, but um, I made a uh, an appearance Monday night on the Monday Milk program, and they since I was the guest host, I got to choose the subject, and I, I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, learning and using the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And so I hope everybody, if you haven't seen it, you'll go watch that. But uh, I, I think there were some important points uh, made and I, I hope under, uh, Bray understands and, and uh, adopts this. But 
I, I've noticed that you are really very good at uh, open up your Bible as you're talking. Yeah. And and constantly looking up scriptures to support your your uh, conclusions, and so uh, this is what I'm hoping that we more of us can start doing. If if we're not doing it, let's let's think about it. Let's pray about it. Is, shouldn't we be using scriptures as, in our conversations all the time to to back up our uh, our our positions? Mm -hmm. So well done, brother David. Um, let me ask, uh, you know. Hendricks did ask about uh, how to deal with these people, uh, whether they're whether it's an unbeliever coming hard against you personally, or even someone who is a professing believer. But they're not just coming against you and saying you're wrong, but they're doing it in a real hateful, uh, disrespectful manner. Uh, let me let me ask uh, Sister Lisa, uh, what happens when when you encounter someone like that, Sister? Well. I just had something recent happen where someone was coming at me about someone and I asked them what was their point, what was it they were driving at, what is it that they wanted me to do, because they kept, no matter what I answered them, they kept coming back. So I said, well, what is it that you want from me? You want a reaction? I've said I already don't agree with the statement that you're claiming this person made. I pointed out to them. I. It was only like a 30 second clip. So I said, I, I don't know what the context was. I don't know if the person was playing devil's advocate in the conversation. I don't know uh, exactly what the context was. If I judge it just by what you, you've uh, said in the video, then I would have to say I don't agree with the statement. That being said, what is the response you want? Do you want me to try to join your attack train? Because that's not, not going to happen. Nice. And they didn't respond, of course. Once I asked them that, it just shut it down. They, they didn't continue. So usually I try to examine what a person's motives are. And you can usually feel the hostility in the comment and what's coming through. I mean, you can actually feel it. And I just wasn't going there. You know, that's like, to me, that's playground type mentality. If you think someone has stated doctrinal error, then just point it out, point out that the error was incorrect and move on. I don't understand what the wanting people to join the bag wag bandwagon of attacks is all about other than, you know, what Proverbs said, God abhors these six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. And mentioned there is he who sows discord among the brethren. Mm. And that's what they're trying to pull people into, and I won't be a part of it. Yeah. Amen. I, um, that's uh, There's another thing that is related, and you, you brought that up, is that not only uh, do we have to deal with someone against uh, let's see, I have to, someone's coming against me personally, but there's another problem where someone is trying to get me to turn against, uh, you know, uh, another. Uh, and this happens really actually on a daily basis, because particularly there's, there's one person that is, I talk to almost every day. Uh, I, I have a lot of interesting conversations with him on theology. I enjoy the conversation. But there's always the attempt to try to turn me against others in our congregation, trying to trying and not understanding the concept of liberty on non-essentials. That uh, they, they think that uh, uh, every time we disagree about something, uh, they they want to raise every issue up to the level of importance that, of the core doctrine. They, the problem is, uh, um, we we have a saying here. We have uh, uh, four core doctrines. The deity of Christ, faith alone in Christ alone for salvation, eternal security, and the fourth core doctrine is there should never be a fourth dogma. <laughs> so we're dogmatic on these three things. Dogma means that uh, we insist that we must all agree on this. Jesus is God. He's not merely a prophet. Okay. Uh, we can't compromise. We cannot permit, uh, you know, uh, people in the congregation uh, teaching that Jesus is not eternal God Almighty. Uh, but then apart from those three dogmas, 
most other people, and you're going to find that, uh, I, unfortunately, I'm, I found this with uh, a brother that w has, was with us for the last uh, few months, and, and, and now the, he's distanced himself uh, because he, he's really uh, elevating other things to a higher importance than they should be. And when he sees people disagreeing in this congregation, he sees that they have a position different than his. Um, he can't tolerate. He had to get space from the congregation. So this is a big problem. Uh, but there are people who are trying to turn me against uh, the, uh, you know, our brethren and co-workers. Uh, they, every day people are trying to get me to do that. Uh, so let me ask uh, who hasn't spoken recently, uh, Brother Cripps. Uh, when someone comes against you, and uh, as if offend, offensive. By the way, uh, one uh, street preacher told me once when we were talking about these kinds of attacks, he said, uh, well, Luke, a, a dead man cannot be offended. Right. And, um, you know, I, I, I tried to find a verse that, that says that. I, I don't think we, if anybody can think of a verse that actually says that, let me know. Uh, we might find uh, something that could uh, support that position. But uh, I thought about it. I thought, true. If if I, if I'm dead, as as I'm supposed to be, the 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 uh, the, the natural man, the, the more the natural man dies off, then uh, the the less chance of me anything offending me. Um, but uh, I'm not there yet, and uh, I do get offended. I get hurt, do get hurt feelings. Uh, um, but how do you deal with that, Brother Cripps? And have you also dealt with anybody who's tried to turn you against and cause discord and cause divisions in, in our uh, congregation? Oh, yeah. Gosh, yes. Um, I'll answer the last one first. I mean, I, I, I think it happens all the time. And if you go back to uh, two years ago, even, um, say, I came, I came back online, like on Facebook, and started doing the YouTube stuff and get involved with... Uh, uh, YouTube ministries and all that about two years ago. And right when I came in, I saw all the discord before I was even a part of any of this stuff. I saw the, the, the different, uh, what seemed like different groups and seemed like a lot of, um, uh, in the chats, uh, people kind of warring with each other. Now I saw it less, uh, in, in this particular community, but I would go to some of the other ones that are out there on YouTube and I couldn't handle it. I mean, I just couldn't be around it. Um, and, I, and I have to say that God has changed me in this area because back in the day, as they say, um, I was a person that would definitely jump into the mud and wrestle around with someone over uh, uh, false doctrines or didn't even have to be false doctrines. There was a, believe it or not, there was a, there was a point in which I would get in the mud with people over politics, which is crazy because it's I'm in a completely different place now than I was back then. Um, but if there was any difference of opinion and I felt strongly about something, um, I had no problem uh, letting the person know it. And I would go on and on and on with them uh, until it was frustrating. And it, it did affect my attitude. It affected my, uh, my well-being uh, in many ways. And uh, honestly, there was something I got out of it. Uh, and I admit that. So I'm putting myself out there. There, were, there was a part of it that I got something out of. Therefore, I kept doing it. And it, to me, looking back at that person, it was definitely my flesh. It was, it was not walking in the spirit. Um, that's not to say that if you're refuting false doctrine, you're not walking in the spirit. I'm saying the wrestling in the mud part uh, and, and the getting, getting all uh, fired up about it, it to, the, to the point where you're going after someone, um, it's not good. Now, I would, um, uh, depending on who it was and what the situation uh, was, I would react uh, better toward people that were treating me with respect and dignity. But how often does someone that uh, come against something you believe with, respect and dignity. But we do that in, in this body, as we've talked about many times, Brother Luke, when you're uh, discussing uh, liberty um, and uh, agreeing on the core essentials and then uh, liberty and, and the other stuff. And um, it, it works, it works, but you can't make it work for the people outside of that who don't put themselves under any rules. They don't see any, any, anything as a, as a governing body or a pattern 
uh, for them to follow. They, they see themselves as, um, a lot of times, because they're self-righteous people, they see themselves in a different place. Um, I don't do it anymore. Um, I, I, I have gotten attacked. Um, uh, I have, um, you know, not to the point of uh, like Renee is attacked, certainly not at that point. Uh, but people saying uh, things wrongly about me. Um, and uh, the Bible is clear about this, that we should be prepared for that kind of persecution uh, for Jesus' name, not for politics, not for personal opinion on, on, on social uh, topics, but when we're talking about, talking about Christ and talking about the gospel, uh, talking about things from the Bible, we should be prepared for persecution from the world. And the last point I wanted to make is um, I can handle criticism and persecution from an unbeliever way more than I can from a hypocrite. Um, the minute I see the hypocrisy, there's a part of me that really reacts strongly to that. And that's the thing that makes me want to get in the mud with them. An unbeliever just saying, you know, oh, well, you're ridiculous. You believe in a, in a, you know, a God, a invisible a dude upstairs. Uh, and, and telling me that my my beliefs are ridiculous doesn't phase me one bit now. Doesn't phase me one bit. But someone saying, uh, you know, grace is you know greasy and saying that we uh, have a license to sin and all that stuff. That stuff uh, uh, gets to me more than uh, someone that just is an unbeliever. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I obviously we we all agree that. Um, uh, our religious works, whether it's to do good works or to get s bad things, sin out of our life, um, our efforts to do those things uh, do uh, do not factor into salvation. It's not faith plus works equal, uh, equal salvation. It's faith alone. Uh, but, uh, well, I forgot why I was going to say that. I'll think of it again in a minute. But let me ask Brother Dave. Um, you're, we, we all have kind of different um, focal points uh, in our ministries, and, and that's, it should be that way. The Bible says that the church is a body with many parts, and some people are the hands, some people are the ears, some people are the mouths. And Brother Dave, you're a mouth. I'm, I'm sure you also offer your hands, and you, know, you, you pitch in and help. We all should be trying to do anything we can to, to help uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, but Dave, you're, you're an evangelist and Hendrix, Hendrix was asking, what in the, is the possible reason anybody would reject this eternal life as a free gift? What, what is, would you say, if you had to narrow it down to uh, like the, the main reason it's, it's rejected? Main reason that what's rejected, Luke? the gift of eternal life when the gospel oh my goodness i you know I, I think i think a lot of it has to do with you know the the human flesh and that we are um you know ingrained since since childhood to uh you know be prideful in ourselves or to uh you know be pushed to uh you know work hard and to earn and to deserve and to uh, you know, not, not like compete, but you know how the world sets you up, you know, uh, you know, work harder, you know, um, go faster, go stronger, you know, you can do this, earn it, deserve it. And, and I think when you hear the gospel message to uh, simply receive something that God's offering by putting your faith and trust in Jesus, whom you have not seen, um, you know, it's just, it really is, it goes against the grain of what is instilled in us, in our flesh. And so a lot of people, you know, they come to, you know, professing a faith in Christ, but then they look to themselves and they're constantly trying to measure their acceptance by God, by how well they're performing. And, uh, you know, they're just like hamsters and wheels. And so I, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it truly is not easy to, um, you know, completely just put your faith on Christ alone without having a tendency to, you know, look at yourself. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So uh, I think what you're saying, and I'm, what I would summarize is that um, it's our, our nature 
to and we and also part of our experience growing up and being taught that you don't get something for nothing and it's some things are too good to be true and that's a natural um reason to resist this and 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 laugh it off that uh what do you mean you don't you, you personal merit heaven is not determined by our personal merit you're you got to be kidding me uh brother david um you heard what uh, Brother Dave said, and I just said here. Uh, you in agreement on that, or do you have any other insights? Why would someone, hearing the good news about the free gift of eternal life, what in the world would prevent them from uh, uh, receiving it, believing it, receiving it, and just jumping for joy? I, I think number one is pride. Yep. Because to understand the gospel, you must first understand the law. And the law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So the law shows us that we're wicked and vile and undone. And we have nothing to offer God. And some people can't handle that part. Mm. And so, so the law is starting to work on them and they just abandon it because they don't want to see themselves for who they really are. And that, so they just dodge the whole question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pride, uh, you know, I think that we will, we could all agree that um, the fall of uh, Lucifer was pride. Mm -hmm. uh, the fall in the garden was pride. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam and Eve, they, they were persuaded by uh, Satan that rather than be just be relying on God to provide life and everything for them, they could become independent and become like God themselves if they just had this knowledge of good and evil. Yeah. So that it appealed to their pride. And and then we've all inherited, I mean, some people don't think that we actually have a, a sin nature. Uh, maybe, I don't know if anybody here is on that, uh, has that viewpoint, but I think we mostly probably all agree that um, we, we are born with this sin nature and yeah. it's the most natural thing in the world. You don't have to teach a child to lie uh, at some no. point but when they're two or three or four, you, see, you, you observe, observe they start to lie and do things and, and sinning. It's just, it's just a most natural thing in the world for, for us. Uh, so uh, this uh, spirit, uh, this uh, nature of um, pride and rebellion and independence and not feeling like I, I, I want to be independent. I don't want to be under the thumb and control of it of a God, um, let me ask um, uh, Sister Paula, uh, let me have your thoughts on that. Um, I mean, I, I would definitely agree uh, if I personalize it. Um, I, for me, I, I, did, I wasn't raised in church, so I never even believed it for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so it took... Uh, my wanting to believe it uh for anything to happen you know um for every uh real christian i might have ever met there was probably a hundred that ain't you know they're not real christians they're they're hypocrisians as mm. i can say um and i never saw god because i never saw anything good when i saw people do good it was you know, for their own enjoyment, mm -hmm. uh, or was, wasn't really for the other person. Right. Like, you know, now that we have uh, social media, I see these guys that, I saw this video of this guy that started his camera and then ran to pull some guy out of a burning car. <laughs> it was sure to turn that camera on first. Yeah, of course. I was like, what? I was like wow, that's, that's a, it's a visual depiction of how I saw the world. <laughs> yeah. And so, um, when I did see good for the first time was when I had a baby. And I don't know why, but I never thought about God before that. Mm. Not for real, but I thought, that where, what, where was this person a year ago? You know, who, who made this person? Because all I did was eat a lot and get fat. I didn't do anything. And this perfect little human came out. So that made me interested in maybe putting down my defenses a little bit. Because before my daughter, I really didn't give a crap what happened to me. Mm. You know, because to me, there was no God. Nothing mattered. Right. Nobody really cared about you. There really wasn't love in the world. And so, you know, 
I was like destructive how a lot of people are that that live with that mindset yeah uh so certain things had to happen for me to even get to the idea that maybe god might be true um and it was just my little bit of willingness and he would show me a little bit more of himself and i would draw a little bit nearer to him and he would show me a little bit more i mean and it progressed from there but uh but I think David's right, um, because most people that you come across uh, actually do have a Christian background. They have um, their own thoughts about, you know, the Bible and God and stuff. And a lot of them I've noticed since I've been a Christian, because I never hung out with Christians before, but a lot of them are hung up on not understanding that it's not of their works at all because they they compare themselves to the world and like a person like me who did clearly wicked things and they would say well i've never done such things right they can't it's it's almost impossible for them to separate that Mm -hmm. and so and it always comes down to pride every sin i think at the root of it is pride Mm -hmm. okay um uh, pride, the idea that uh, it's ridiculous that you think you can get something for nothing or a free gift of it. Heaven's a free gift. That's too good to be true. These are the kinds of things that uh, I think we we all agree and we, that we hear and deal with. Um, um, I remember what I forgot when I was talking about the sin nature and, and uh, uh, the, the good works um, question. Um, but now I forgot again. So, oh, by the way, while I'm talking about it, uh, and I'm forgetting and being an embarrassment to myself right now, uh, let me tell you that I was supposed to have my uh, procedure done on my neck, um, the oblation, the nerves burned on my neck. I went there to the surgery, surgery center to have it done, and it had to be canceled because I had, uh, without thinking, taken some medicine that I was supposed to abstain from for three days. Uh, and be, since I took it, uh, I was disqualified from the surgery because it would cause bleeding. <clears throat> so I didn't ha- get that surgery after all. <clears throat> but I do feel like I'm a little bit in a stupor, even though I didn't get any anesthesia. So <laughs> that's my <laughs> uh, Let me ask Sister Lisa. Um, uh, I, I haven't heard from you on this. I, this question from Hendrix about what possible reason would someone have to refuse this free gift of eternal life? Is there, you agree that these points we've made? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I was thinking about the different scriptures that talk about how the earth declares the glory of the Lord, Mm -hmm. how creation speaks to his marvelous works and to his, you know, to his presence that the things that are seen, are made by the things that are unseen and that they testify to what's unseen meaning god as far as not being able to visibly see him the creation declares him and as sister uh, paula v was saying she began to change when she beheld her beautiful baby girl you know it's right here in the book that's happened numerous times to people where when they had a child, they began to change. Case in point one was uh, Enoch. And my dad told me when I was a little girl, he said, uh, you know, baby, when uh, Enoch was living, he really wasn't living any kind of good life before the Lord. And that all changed when he had Methuselah. Mm. And he was about 300 years old. So, man, mind you, we don't even get to live that long anymore. Boom. And here he he didn't even begin to consider changing until his son was born when he was 300 years old. Mm. And he began to change um, and became so good at living upright before the Lord. Well, we know the story of Enoch. He walked with God and was not. For God took him. So it's not surprising to me that a child will inspire someone to ask, where did this life come from? 
Yeah. You know, as Sister Paula said, you can't look this led her to go on to discover more truth mm -hmm. about the fact there is a creator and that he's very personal. I think that's one thing that I have always found curious about other religions is how they have God out there somewhere. But with true biblical Christianity, you're talking about relationship with a creator and an invitation to become a son of God and an heir. And even the Bible says a joint heir with Christ. Amen. And anyone who can read this scripture and begin to comprehend those things should be astonished at the invitation that has been extended mm. by the creator to come and literally have fellowship with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to get uh, the thoughts of uh, the, the, the panelists as far as uh, what's on your mind, but, but first I just want to respond quickly to somebody in the chat room that uh, there was a little back and forth asking about if our pets, if their, their dog is going to be in heaven with them. Uh, uh, you, some of you probably know that I have a playlist titled 50 Hours in Heaven. And it's not called 50 Hours in Heaven because I'm claiming that I died and went to heaven for 50 hours and I came back to, and I'm here to tell you about it, like some of these things, books and things you, you've seen. It's only called 50 Hours in Heaven because the playlist is actually 50 hours long in content. Uh, what we did was we took Randy Alcorn's book titled Heaven, and there were three or four of us. We read the book and discussed it, and it took 50 hours to, to do that. But it's very comprehensive. Any kind mm -hmm. of question that you could imagine about heaven yeah. uh, was uh, addressed in that book. Uh, including will your pets be in heaven and uh, many other questions like that. So I would say to the people in the chat room who are discussing this, uh, why don't you go and watch the playlist. Um, the only one I know of who's really tried to take on this playlist is, since it's so long is Hendrix. And um, Hendrix, last time he reported to me about his progress, he says he was watched about 20 hours of it so far. So he's gradually working his way through that playlist. But one of the things, besides all of the questions and answers on the subject uh, that you'll find, uh, for me, it's, um, well, he says I'm on part 24 of it now. Okay. Uh, I think, I think 24 is almost done because I think each video is two hours long. So he's getting close to the end, I think. <laughs> but, uh, uh the, the, the questions and answers are, are interesting and worthwhile, but to me, the most important thing about the subject that I learned is that it's the most neglected subject in Christianity. I'm asking everybody, uh, all of the sermons you've ever heard from a pastor, have you ever heard anybody do a full sermon only on heaven? No. Nope. I mean, I've, I never have. Nope. Uh, I, I've only heard little references to it, but never an actual one sermon. Someone commented after one or two of the videos, they says, when we were first starting, they said, "Well, you've talked for two hours about heaven. I mean, don't you think you've, uh, you've done enough? Uh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just scratched the surface. I didn't even know it was going to be 50 hours long, but there is a lot to be uh, learned and said about heaven. And I will tell you this, at the time that I did that, playlist, that period of time is definitely one of the happiest periods of my life because my mind was on this promise uh, and, and it is so exciting to think about yeah. uh, what we're promised and what's waiting for us. Yeah. So uh, unless, if anybody wants to respond to that in the, in the panel, go ahead. Uh, otherwise, I'll, we'll move on to whatever else is on your mind. Uh, all right. Uh, so, so let me ask then, oh, by the way, in the in the chat room, I am paying attention and, and I'm asking if you have a question or a point you wanna make and you want us to respond to put it in all caps. And I've been trying to do that to you know, be involved in what you're talking about, 
But uh, if you do want us to uh, respond to anything, please make make a statement or, or a question in all caps, and we'll we'll uh, talk about that. But for now, let me ask the panelists here: uh, What is on your mind? Uh, anybody who has something that you think is, uh, you know, maybe you need to talk about or uh, something, a question that you maybe may need help with, um, a praise report. Um, well, I'll respond. I, I was, uh, I didn't want to jump in um, on top of anyone if they wanted to respond on what you just said about heaven, but I would like to just briefly touch on that and just to say that I also read the, the Randy Alcorn book and um, I thought it was delightful, and I um, have always had an interest in this, and, and I, I think we should all be interested in that and what the Bible does say about heaven. Um, and I thought they did a really good job of taking Scripture and um, him uh, kind of expanding that and comparing it to uh, the life that we live now and, and making certain um, uh you know, suggestions or opinions uh, about the way it would be and uh, as, as, as much as possible using scripture to kind of present these ideas. Um, I thought it was delightful as well. Uh, I, I enjoyed it immensely. And um, honestly, I, it, it made me excited. It made me more excited about heaven. Um, I've always been excited about it, but like you said, Brother Luke, uh, as far as sermons that are actually preached, uh, the whole thing, on the topic of heaven, I can't remember a single one. Um, people touch on it briefly if the verse they're talking about said something about heaven. Uh, but we're we're supposed to be looking forward to to that. We're supposed to be looking forward not just to heaven itself, but time with the Lord. And um, I, I for one, uh, I can wait. You know, people say they can't wait. I can wait because I know that they're obviously while I still breathe and and bloods run through my veins, I feel like I, I still have a purpose here. So that's that's up to him uh, as far as my life and, and, and when I go home or when Christ returns, that's all on him. I don't have anything to do with that. Uh, but uh, until then, I can look forward to w what is to come, uh, especially when we look at how uh, bad this world is. And we know as believers that it's, it's nothing like what it was supposed to be or it's nothing like God intends it to be. Uh, the end result. Uh, so there's lots to look forward to. Thank you, Brother Cripps. Uh, yeah, I'm happy that uh, I'm not the only one to have read that book on heaven. Um, I say throughout the uh, the uh, heaven uh, playlist, we, we say numerous times that we are not endorsing Randy Elkhorn's right. gospel. Right. Thank you. Uh, be because it is his gospel message is tainted like Lord, with lordship, uh, yeah. but um, that does not uh, negate uh, everything else in this uh, on the subject of heaven. No. And it's true that uh, there's many of the points are, are clearly uh, taken from scriptures, and some of the things are attempts to, uh, let's say, um, uh, extrapolate. Yeah, you're you're trying to um, say. Um, they, they infer it, and they, yeah. you know, you get it out of the scriptures, but it's not explicitly stated. But you're trying to put two and two together and come yeah. to a conclusion and answer a question. So some of it's a little bit speculative, and some of it's very clear. But yeah. I, I really recommend it. Um, all right. Uh, does Does anybody have a praise report? I do, but I'll wait. Okay. Anybody Someone else? Has a chance to speak. Um, I have a, a, not a praise report, but I do have a prayer request. Okay. Uh, my dear friend, Autumn, and her mother-in-law, Kathy. Um, Kathy is in the end stages of lung cancer, mm -hmm. and she has opted to go on hospice. Okay, good. And my friend, Autumn, is, is taking care of her. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep them in prayer. Uh, She's been able to have good conversations with her about the Lord. Good. And she feels like she's in a good place. So just pray for um, comfort mm -hmm. and wisdom because this is, you know, if you know what hospice is, this is a, it's tough. It's going to be a difficult time. Yeah. Uh, so just keep them in prayer. Okay. Please. All right. So, um, by the way, uh, Paula, 
Um, your audio is a little bit softer or lower than the others. Uh, so I don't know if you need to get closer to the microphone or if it's just me, but um, in case everybody didn't hear her, that, well, she, she has a, a friend who is in hospice with cancer and, and, and needs your prayers uh, uh, to go through this. Hospice is not a place where you go to get healed. It's, it's where you go to die. And, and uh, let's also pray that um, uh, she believes and it gets eternal life. Uh, I don't know if she has already believed or if, but um, <clears throat> let's hope that she uh, comes to faith. Uh, all right. Uh, her name, uh, what was her name again, Paula? Autumn. Uh, Autumn is my friend and Kathy is her mother-in-law. Okay. okay. So Autumn's mother-in-law, Kathy, is who you pray for. Paula's audio is fine, Maureen says, so it's just me, Paula. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so, Brother Cripps, you have a praise report. Yeah, yeah. So uh, a lot of you are familiar with that. I just made a made a uh, pretty big move from uh, where I lived in Fort Mill to Williamsburg, and um, I'm, I'm working again, which I, I'm absolutely delighted to be doing that. Um, there's a lot of advantages to taking care of a 94-year-old woman and, and that I uh, have a little bit more free time. It is demanding, uh, but I wasn't able to work during that period. So um, I really, really missed it. And on top of that, to have a job where I'm not working for some uh, corporation that doesn't care about me or, or, or doesn't have my best interest at heart um, and something that deals with people, the, it's right up my alley. Uh, it, it's as as if uh, God provided a job that I'm tailor, tailor made for, and every day is delight. Uh, I haven't been in a job like this in a long time, where I look forward to waking up every day, and you know I try to be a good servant, good steward, uh, obviously a good worker, a good employee. Uh, but I can't say that each day uh, working at different jobs that I've had throughout my life was enjoyable, or that I looked forward to a lot of times. Uh, jobs I've had, I'm, I'm watching the clock and can't wait till I get off and looking forward to my, my days off. Maybe everyone else just loves their job and, and it's just me. It's just me that watches the clock and looks forward to the weekends. But that, that certainly does, uh, uh, it, it's been the case for me, but that's not the way it is now. So I'm praising God, not only that the move uh, went out without a hitch, I did mention that before, but I'm still in the, in the process, uh, certainly of still praising him that uh, it was a smooth transition, and um, also uh, for those of you that uh, that knew, um, my family is selling the townhouse, and I do benefit from that. It is our inheritance, and uh, the, on top of the move going well, and the job going well, and the relationship going well, and um, getting closer to God every day. On top of that, um, the 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 townhouse uh, just went up on sale uh, six days ago and they showed it eight times and they already have an offer. It's not a, there's not a contract yet, but they made an offer. Uh, it was like 3000 above asking price. Um, and it does, it does benefit me. And so I stepped out in faith, uh, not knowing how it was all going to work out with a lot of unknowns. And God is quickly uh, showing me, uh, not just by the sale of the townhouse, but just by everything that's happened. Um, that he he's trustworthy, and I knew that before, but um, in my uh, feeble, um, uh, finite mind, and in stepping into a place of of putting my my um, putting my actions where my mouth is when I talk to other people about trusting God and me to actually do it and to rely fully on Him uh and have it work the way it has it is incredibly great for my faith and i give all glory to god and and it is a praise report for me so mm -hmm. thank you awesome praise jesus right. i'm so happy it's all working out great for you brother thank you um uh, there is a question from uh uh steve figura, figura. Uh, I have a question. Why do Catholics use John twenty twenty three for their reasoning for confession? I don't see what they see. Um, Brother David, I know you got your Bible in front of you. Um, if you could look up John twenty twenty three for us and read it to us, and then give us your thoughts on uh, why Roman Catholics would uh, use that to justify their confessional booth. 
Brother David? All right, yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right, John 20, 23. Yes. Says, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So, yeah, I'm not too familiar with the, I, I know the, about the confessional booth that they use, the Catholics. So, I get, I don't know what they're talking that they're going to remit the sins because this is what the, what Jesus was talking to his disciples. And so he gave them special abilities in that time frame to do certain things to uplift Jesus name. So I did, I think that's just totally out of context mm -hmm. that they're using that nowadays to say that they're removing people's sins or leaving them with them based on if you come and confess or not. I mm -hmm. think that's, way mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. well i think that first john 1 9 and 10 that's the portion that the roman catholics primarily used to support their uh confessing to the priest but this particular portion uh, i'm going to ask you to read it more uh the verses be leading up to it but uh i obviously i if i'm thinking remembering correctly um this may be also the part where they elevate peter in, in peter's position um, to be the uh, the first pope because of what is said. So could you read it, give us more context, and then we'll discuss it? Okay, yeah. yeah I'll just back up a little bit. Uh, all right, so verse number 20 says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then, they were, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, Again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see said unto them, except I shall see his hand, the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them, being, and came Jesus the, to the doors, being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. He said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I was mistaken. I, I thought that portion, that verse, John 20, 23, was, was maybe what, a part of the time when Peter declared, uh, uh, Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? And Peter said, You're the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Peter was declared to be, uh, uh, you know, Simon was declared to be Peter, the rock, and on this rock I'll build my church. Um, and so I, I, I was wrong uh, thinking that was part of the same thing. But, uh, okay, let's ask uh, anybody who wants to, uh, let's see if you can relate this verse 2023 20, to the uh, justification Roman Catholics would use it to uh, say, go into the confessional booth, confess to a pope for the remission of, I mean, not a pope, a priest for the remission of sins. Brother Luke, yes, um, bro Brother Dave, Brother David, just hit the nail on the head and, and where Jesus illustrates that he uh, breathed onto his disciples and he ordered them, which indicates to me he gave them the special ability to remit the sins of others because I believe they were going to spread out and and go and and you know spread the gospel and uh you know preach with power and signs following and um as david said i think jesus gave them this ability um but for that to continue on to another man that's uh, uh doesn't even make sense as jesus christ uh said that he has become the mediator mm. And he's the intercessor, you know, for our sin. Hebrews 7 says that he ever liveth to make intercession for us, that he is the mediator between God and man. And I think that the Roman Catholic Church is put man in position to play mediator, a lot like uh, some of Christianity does with their quote unquote apostles and prophets. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm. I see it differently in terms of uh, applying it to those individuals 
at that particular time for a limited time. Uh, as you said, I, the way I think that that verse and also the, the verse I referred to about uh, Peter being acknowledged uh, as the uh, God gave you this. No man didn't reveal it to you, but God gave this to you. So you're Peter and, uh, and on this rock, I'll build my church. Uh, all that is, I, I think, the same uh, idea. And that is that uh, the, these people didn't have the power to, for remission of sins uniquely. Uh, Brother Dave, you got the power to remit sins by sharing the gospel. That's how sins are remitted. That's how uh, we uh, So they were uh, just authorized, as anybody else, any other believer would be authorized to sh share the gospel uh, for the remission of sins. Uh, and I'd say the same thing about um, when Peter was um, acknowledged and he says, on this rock, I will build my church. Of course, the Roman Catholics say that the rock is the person of Peter. But I think we probably agree that uh, when he's referring to on this rock is the, uh, the principle, the statement that Peter made, that you're the Christ, the son of the living God, the, you know, the promised Messiah. That's, that's the principle or the rock, the foundation of Christianity that the church is based upon. And it also says you have the keys to heaven. Uh, and people apply that to Peter, but but Peter was not alone at that time. All of the disciples, apostles and disciples were there for that time. So uh, who has the keys? Uh, anybody who has the gospel has the keys to heaven, not just Peter. That's how I understand those verses. Okay, any, anybody else? What you, give us your thoughts on all that. Okay. I agree. I agree completely. But I'm all I'm doing is saying I agree with what you just said. I mean, because we we don't have uh, we don't have the power like uh, like the disciples were given to to just remit or not remit someone else's sin. But I like what you said uh, to Brother Dave about preaching the gospel because if 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 they um, uh, start seeking Christ because they hear the gospel from you. And um, God opens their eyes and ears, and uh, they're saved. Then that's a great thing. So in in that way, there you, you play a small part in getting someone to that point where God remits their sin. But we're not doing it ourselves for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as the Catholics are concerned, it's just it's it's just a ridiculous concept that some person in a in a black suit with a little white thing in the center under their neck uh, has any more power than anyone else. Um, and certainly they don't have the power to remit anyone's sins. And, and it's horrible that people walk away from that, walk away from a confessional booth thinking that, that, it, that it worked, that they remit their sins. And the whole, the whole system is, you know, go once a week and confess. And then, you know, you try to think of every possible sin you can commit. So, I mean, you know, we all know that it's completely work-based and it's far away from uh, remittance of sin. Uh, so for, for us, it's just, the whole concept is, is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, amen. And while, while we're here uh, ranting against uh, the largest cult in the world, Roman right. Catholicism, um, the, uh, the idea of um, elevating someone to uh, the, uh, the position of priest uh, and elevating others to the status of saint these are heretical Roman Catholic theologies. The Bible says that Brother Cripps is a priest. And, and uh, Sister Lisa, you're a saint. And so on, back and forth. You're all priests. Um, if Brother David can probably find the verses for it, because we, we should have verses to support this. But if you can find the verse that says that a believer is known as a, 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 pre, a saint, and every believer is actually a priest. Of course, Jesus is our high priest. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm wrong about that, anyway, feel free to correct me or elaborate on it. Anyone? Uh, Sister Lisa, uh, what stepped away? I don't know. Lisa, have you returned? Okay, she's Brother still. Luke, I'm going to have to extend my regrets. I'm actually going to have to go. I apologize. Okay. Thank All you right. guys so much. I enjoyed it. All right. All right, Lisa, Bye, Lisa. Thanks for joining. Take care, Bye -bye. Lisa. Bye -bye. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, anybody want to expound on, on what I said, uh, whether you agree or disagree? 
Okay. Um, I don't really, I, I don't really know much about Catholicism, so that's why I haven't spoken up. Um, I, I don't understand how they could honestly think that a person is forgiving their sins. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Like I can understand it intellectually from an outsider, but I've not. I I don't know how. It's funny because people are fooled in so many different ways. And I can understand how someone could be fooled by evolution because I was, but I don't understand how someone could be fooled by Catholicism, yeah. you know? Um, like I asked Matthias when all that, uh, when the priests got caught in pedophilia many years ago and it was like a really big deal. And I asked him, I was like, well, you were a Catholic then. I was like, what did you, what did you guys tell yourselves about what was going on? How did you not know this was like some, this like a creepy religion you were a part of? And he's like, you know, I think we just thought, well, there's those kind of people in everything, yeah. you know? So, I mean, uh, it's, it's interesting how far off Catholicism is from the Bible and it, and it apparently doesn't matter to Catholics. Like their trust is not in the word of God, clearly. I mean, you could give them example after example. And I, I know uh, many years ago, we knew somebody who was Catholic and he was a really nice guy and we liked him and our families hung out and stuff. And he had a list of reasons why Catholicism was the true church. And, you know, Matthias and I made a, a list of responses to those. And then he made another list <laughs> afterwards, still justifying the Catholic stance on certain things, like um, Mary being a perpetual virgin and being shown scripture and still not accepting it. And it's like, all right, well, there's, I mean, I don't know what else to do other than you know, quote scripture, it, it, this is where the power is. It's in the word of God, but you have free will to reject it. So what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, so. Well, the, the official position, and I, I just saw a, a really interesting interview with a, couple, with a Roman Catholic priest that was being interviewed and asked about, you know, their all their doctrines. And um, there's a lot that was uh, revealed that was, I wish everybody had seen what I saw, but uh, one of the things that he said, and he, he was not embarrassed at all to say it, 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 because this is their official position, is that the, the Bible uh, is uh, not to be even con considered if, if uh, as the word of God, but rather the, the church, whatever the church decrees is the word of God. So, um, uh, the the church uh, positions or canon uh, yeah. church supersede yeah. the Bible, and if if you wanted to, um, when we read the Bible, we uh, say this is the word of God. If it's in the Bible, it's true, and if it's a doctrine there in the Bible, then that's a doctrine I believe is is a correct, valid do doctrine. Yeah. But it seemed like in Roman Catholicism. Uh, they decided that whatever the Bible says, they'll do the opposite. Uh, it, it says, uh, don't forbid anyone to marry. They forbid the priests to marry. They said, this Bible says, don't call any man father as your spiritual father. And, and uh, they they call the priest father. Uh, it says, don't pray uh, with vain repetitions as the uh, heathens do. And they do these vain repetitions on the rosaries. Uh, um, and, and there's many more, but it just seemed like whatever the Bible says, they, they'll do the exact opposite. Right. I mean, if you can get them to a point maybe to where you can show them and they will agree that they are really trusting in their religion. Uh, but I don't, I've never been able to get to that point because they'll avoid it. They don't want to say that they're not relying on the Bible, but they're not. Um, I, I don't, 
I don't understand where Catholics are coming from. Yeah. So I just say, Lord, you know, you open my mouth, whatever it is I'm supposed to say. Cause, well, there, uh, there is a lot of hope for a lot of Catholics. I mean, I, I grew up as, raised as a Catholic. Uh, Matthias did. Probably ha half the people in the congregation, I, I would guess, uh, had some experience of being a Catholic at some period of time in their life. And so, uh, um, but then there's other Roman Catholics that uh, they're going to be Roman Catholics for life. And nothing could ever change their mind because uh, uh, they're just convinced that it's the true church and they will not read the Bible. It's just like a, if you tell a, a, a Jehovah's Witness, uh, here's uh, something I'd like for you to read. It shows you the history of your church and all the false prophecies and uh, and uh, uh, they, they won't, they can't accept it or read it if it's not published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. They're forbidden. And Roman Catholics, they, the Bible, for them to read the Bible, it's almost like, you know, a, a garlic for a, for a vampire, you know, you show, I remember I showed my, my mother-in-law, I was reading the Bible, she said, what's that? I said, oh, I'm reading the Bible. And she, and she like, was she like repelled by it. She just no, didn't want to have anything to do with it the Bible. Not only do they not want to uh, read it, but um, they're actually, they don't, they don't believe they could understand it. It requires a priest to understand it and explain it to them. Uh, and they just want to avoid it for the most part. When I say they, I was criticized in a comment recently because I said they on Wednesday referring to and it generally people. And so, uh, Obviously, not every Roman Catholic is like that, but but broadly speaking, it's true. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, I now we're, it's it's uh, eleven p.m. in the East, so uh, normally I try to end up these end these programs about eleven p.m. Eastern time. Yeah. So let's take uh, some time now. Uh, if you have something in the chat room that you want us to address before we say good night, put it in there now. Otherwise, we're going to start giving our summary thoughts now, though. So uh, let me go, start with um, brother uh, brother Dave first. Uh, tell us tell us what you thought of the discussion tonight, the time together, please. Yeah, tonight was an amazing episode. Uh, there's a lot of crips. I just want to say congratulations on the uh, praise report, man. That's good that God's doing all that. Uh, Sister Paula, I am right there with you on uh, so confused. With the Roman Catholicism, I, I don't even, you know, it's like the Bible's an apple and, and the Roman Catholic Church is like an orange. It doesn't even <laughs> compare. Uh, Brother Luke, it's good to have you back this week. Uh, Sister Lisa's long gone, but I was it was good to hear from her again. Everybody in the chat, like I said, I'm glad you made it and I hope you have a good weekend. God bless you all. Okay, thank you, Brother Dave. Thanks, Brother Dave. Appreciate that. And uh, next up, Brother Brother Cripps, uh, summarize your thoughts on the time tonight, please. Yeah, yeah. Another another uh, uh, great fellowship Friday. I was glad to be here. Um, it, it, the time goes by quick. I, you know, when you said eleven o'clock, I wasn't even watching the clock. So that's good. It means I enjoy it, just like I was talking about. Watch the clock at work. Uh, the time just uh, flew by. So that's uh, I've I've enjoyed it and uh, good to talk with you guys again and to see everyone in the chat i hope everyone has a great week and i look forward to next week okay thank you yeah time does fly by and i know that um uh, it's it, i think that um i'm not a comedian as you can tell but i i think <laughs> that there's a um, uh, an attitude that uh comedians have is that when they get a really good laugh or something they want to leave right then they want to leave on a high note uh, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to over overstay your welcome yeah and, but uh, by uh 90 minutes or two hour programs uh, we get um uh, it flies by and we want more uh, rather yeah. than us overextending our time and then everybody is uh, yeah. you know, uh regrets that uh, it's just too much yeah so uh, we want to leave you craving for more. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, Sister Paula, what do you think? Um, yeah, I had a great time. Uh, I enjoyed uh, the discussions. Um, I'm going to have to think about some stuff I'd like to bring up next Friday, maybe. I said I was going to do that, and then I forgot and got 
movie. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's stuff I, I think to myself all the time, like I would love to get other people's input and then it, it doesn't come to me uh, mm -hmm. when the opportunity arises. Um, I just want to say uh, I really enjoy being on these, uh, this Friday fellowship. Awesome. Um, and uh, I really like hearing other people's views on the Bible. It's, and it's wonderful to be able to do that and not, um, not have a dog in the fight necessarily. Yeah. It's not salvational. Mm -hmm. um, I really learn a lot of stuff and it really encourages me to read more. And that's just awesome. I didn't mm -hmm. have a, anybody to talk to about the Bible other than Matthias for many years. Mm -hmm. And I tend to now like internalize now I'm like seeing God wants me to open up more. And mm -hmm. it's just a great venue to do that. And I encourage the chat also um, think about some stuff during the week that you'd like to bring up um, on our fellowships. And I would love to hear them. Awesome. Hey, all right. Thank you, Sister Paula. Uh, I, I, of course, I did get the questions you sent me uh, for the Sunday uh, program. Uh, I've saved those, and we we did answer one of them on last Sunday. And there's there's several more that you've submitted that will will continue to answer your questions. And everybody else, thanks for sending questions to the Sunday for it to be answered on the Sunday Q and A program. Uh, send more questions. We've got a lot of questions now, but uh, we still always want more questions. And um, okay, and now I'm really, really curious from Brother David uh, to get a, your summary. I hope tonight was a good time for you. I'm, we're all very happy you could join us tonight. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about this uh, experience of Fellowship Friday? Well, thanks for inviting me here. And uh, so, so this is new for me. So I'm not quite used to this. I am used to looking at the chat and seeing who's got questions and what. I didn't see too many questions tonight, but um, it, I, I do like what Paula said is hearing other people's answers to what the scriptures say, because I found in some different scriptures, when I talk to other people, I hear their view of it, and it makes more sense than my view of it. Oh. And so, and sometimes you get stuff from other people it's kind of shocks you because there's one there's this one in particular someone i was talking to and i had thought this if this um this certain way about this scripture in proverbs and then it turns out like the other person's view totally made sense and mine was didn't make any sense hmm. so it, it's interesting to talk to other people sometimes you get like a clue on something you said or something that you think is right, but it's actually different according to the scriptures. And it just takes a second of talking to somebody to figure that out. So mm -hmm. I, I do like that. And it is good not to be fighting about it so we can actually learn together. Yeah. And so I, I don't, I don't like the fighting stuff, but sometimes you do need to defend the gospel, but it, it's cool to have a fellowship where we can um, be chill about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Brother David. I'm happy that you enjoyed the time, and I hope you'll uh, be able to do it again uh, anytime, any Friday night. You're always welcome, and uh, you know, I know that you have a, a program right before, so you might be too worn out, but uh, anytime you want to join us, you're welcome. Now, um, some people are, I would say, freaking out in the chat room. Um, I did copy this question from Hendrix. I'm saving it, and I'll, uh, I'll put it on our list for our Sunday program. We don't have time to go into it. First, this would be a very complicated question. And uh, it's it's something that deserves a lot more time. And uh, so I'm not going to try to squeeze it in in a minute here. So uh, I, I, I don't understand why everybody's shouting over and over and over again. Uh, rest assured, I saved the question and we'll, uh, we'll answer it some other time. Okay. Uh, 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 all right, so uh, yeah, I also noticed that there were not a lot of questions in the chat room. I was trying to pay attention to the conversations going on there uh, and uh, where we're making an attempt to uh, interact with the chat room as much as possible now. So um, in the chat room, yeah, uh, do what Sister Paula uh, has just uh, suggested is prepare some questions in advance. And if you can either send them in for our Sunday program, 
uh, or save them for the Fellowship Friday, and uh, we can try to answer them here. Um, but uh, we didn't get that many tonight. But I enjoyed the conversation. It was a good talk, and I appreciate everybody being here. So uh, thank you all. And I look, oh, by the way, don't forget to join us Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern for uh, the Sunday service for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Thank you, everybody. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God, Jesus. Mm.